Welcome. Today we're going to talk about our experience with the Sculptor 64S. We've played with it for about a month and so far these are the things that we like, things that are okay and the things that we don't like. First of all, let's start with the positives. Firstly, it is a heavy grinder. It's almost 5 kgs and it's quite heavy to pick up and it's very sturdy built. You can see the lines are neat, everything is very neatly done. Uh, the magnets are, are quite strong. Uh, this is probably a little plasticky but the rest is actually fine. The second thing is it's very quiet. Turn it on. Let's see, we're battling to hear it. Even if we get to espresso, it's quite quiet. Then the user interface, as you can see, it's extremely simple to use. You've basically got the dial at the front, which lets you uh, choose your grind coarseness and fineness. The zero is obviously the finest and the 16 is the coarsest. You can remove the top and change that calibration, but we won't go into that because it's not a technical review. There are enough on the online already about that. It's just very simple, pressing the on and off button, Set your calibration, and then there's the RPM button at the back, which allows you to uh, control the RPM. Um, the nice, the next nice thing, the next great thing, the next great thing is the magnetic cup. You insert it, you'll see it clicks into place. It's very satisfying. It is. Um, it matches the grinder very well. And it's also, the other magnetic thing is the hopper. The hopper, you can put it halfway or you can put it full way. That is, if you want to load the, the, the grinder like that, it is very convenient. The one thing we do like is the auger. If you take a look at the grinder inside, you'll see it has an auger over there. When you turn it on, you'll see the auger moving the beans inside to the burrs. This means that the beans are moved into the burrs at a consistent rate, which gives you a far better grind consistency. Talking about grinders, the burrs, the burrs are very well designed. I'm not going to go into technical, but they are able to do both from Turkish all the way up to Quebec, and we've been very happy with the results of the coffee. It does also have, of course, RPM, an RPM sensor at the back. There's a lot of debates about what RPM does, but the RPM basically allows you to choose faster and slower depending on your grind. The common belief is the slower RPMs are for pour overs and the faster RPMs are for espresso. That's the things we like. Now let's just talk about a few things that we don't quite like. First of all, this clicker, it's its a bit of a gimmick. I mean, it does sit, put the, put the chaff down, and I'll show you now when we grind. Let's click the chaff down, but it is a bit of a gimmick, and I'm not that convinced it's uh, really necessary. If they put an ionizer or something like that, that would have been a better solution. The bellows come with the thing. It's so nice to have. The nice to have you so you can blow into the grind and clear out the beans. That is great. Um, same with the brush, which you can clean the burrs with. That's nice. Those that, that comes with it. It's like a nice to have, but not very really necessary. Let's talk about the negatives. Well, the negatives for me are the most important one is the hop is quite can get sticky if you're using RDT on your on your beans. They tend to stick here and even thicken the, the, the auger. So using the uh, RPM, the so using this with RT is, is a challenge. The RPM switches at the back, which means that you very seldom uh, manipulate it and you don't have a um, means that you don't often know that you should manipulate it. Um, the next thing is the capacity. This cup can really only take about 46 grams. So if you bring a Chemex or you want to do an auto drip, it means you have to do more than one or change your cup. Now, other cups don't really fit underneath, so it does become difficult. Um, and that is a problem. That's, the other thing is the cup is very narrow, as you can see. 
I'm going to quickly grind some coffee for espresso. Look now that the ready. It's really, really designed for um, small point pressure, and that is an issue with the kitchen. The normal size for the filter, like the Ancilio, there's a couple of chaff already stuck in there, but, and you can see it one or two of the beans are still stuck there, but that can be a bit of an issue. And this is with our RDT. It doesn't turn itself off automatically. And let's quickly do this. If I put this in here, you see it's very, very narrow. And when I pull the thing up, it's basically a bit of a mess. Uh, then you have to do all sorts of knocking and tamping, which causes spillage. You can put a collar on, which is what I'd recommend you do in the end. As you can see, there's quite a lot of chaff escape. I'm gonna have to turn this off, because it's not turning itself off. There's a lot, of a lot of chaff escape from this thing, and when you click on this, it does release some grinds, but there is quite a lot of chaff escape if you're not using RDT. So in conclusion, we do like the grinder. It is very flexible. It allows us to use a single grinder to do our most of multiple brews. We do like all these little features, the, the simplest of it. I definitely would recommend it. For the price that you're paying, which is about 13,500 Rand, it definitely is worth the money and it allows you to almost have one grinder that solves all your problems. Very good grinder, we're happy we've got it and uh, we recommend it strongly. <laughs>